Super Bowl aftermath 2024 offseason to do list. Does Brandon Ayuk want out for the San Francisco 49ers? They got to figure out their own group before they start bringing in free agents and rookies. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Lockdown 49ers. Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker with you as always. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. A very special guest coming at you in just a minute. We will introduce him as we do every single Wednesday on our Winky Wednesdays episodes here on Lockdown 49ers. Appreciate all the everydayers out there. They know the drill. Appreciate you being subscribed as well on YouTube and everywhere. You get your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's $150 to play with if you bet with if your first bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And now let's bring on today's guest. Nicholas Winkler, come on down. Can't believe it. Wink. Uh, we're, I'm going to get your thoughts on the Super Bowl. Um, I know it's a, it's a disappointing end, right, to the 2023 season as far as the 49ers got to basically get as close as you can get and still lose a Super Bowl at the end of overtime uh, is a tough way to go. Um, but it's not only tough on fans. It's not only tough on those people who really are rooting for the team. It's tough for players on the team. And hearing some of the aftermath and some of the interviews post-game, Day after, a few days after, seeing the social media posts and, you know, George Kittle talking about, man, how hard it is to, you know, that first day and you know, you're in July and you're getting ready for the season. And you go through all this. And I can't imagine what that's like mentally for players to go through the grind of an entire NFL season. And they have uh, they, they put their, you know, their heart and soul into a whole season. You go through this, you build up, you build up, you start, you know, you're doing installs in the spring, right? And you go all the way through to the end of the season and you come up just a little bit short in the immediate aftermath of something like that. It's got to be really hard to mentally be like, okay, cool. Let's just start that all over again. Like I can't imagine Croc, you're with me on this. I can't imagine Croc if tomorrow they said, all right, good season guys. You get to start over your podcast tomorrow. Zero listeners, zero graphics. Uh, you know, we're gonna do a new feed, we're gonna start over again, and you got to build it up through the course of the season. I'd be like, oh, you know what? I might be out. I might be out. <laughs> so, I mean, I can't imagine what that's like to try to get ready to go and get back into this. Wink, by the way, my former radio colleague, Mr. Nicholas Winkler, appreciate you joining the program. How hard does you forget? How hard is it for you to get back up after it and then you could probably start to mentally wrap your head around what it's like for an actual player that's gone through that grind of a season after the super bowl loss on monday tuesday you're getting up and being like man that was a bummer i think this is why i get mad at people when they say why do you say we why why do you mean we we lost we this it's like because my heart tells me that because i'm devastated because i'm broken because that hurts that's why it's we. So anybody that out there that says, why are you saying we? They don't get it. They never will. Because I spent $10,000 on Super Bowl tickets <laughs> to watch my team lose. That's a hey, win. Pe- Peacock, you, you talked about how devastating it would be to have to pick up and, and start back over again. And you referenced starting a, you know, a new podcast or a new feed. And you went through something similar like that, you know, with you and uh, Peacock and Williamson's show. And you guys had to kind of start it over. And I know it was a bummer. I know when we first talked about it, you're like, man, you know, you know, you lost all these listeners and this audience and, and the subscribers to the show, but you did it anyways. And you show up and you still give everyone uh, that great work, that a great show on the network. So I think like Peacock, 49ers, they need to, enter, they need to channel their inner Peacock and it it's going to be tough, but you, you figure it out and you just get back to work and, and, and try to do it again. Yeah, you know, that's what I always say them, I and the 49ers players need to be a lot more like me, and then maybe they would win the Super Bowl next year. Uh, <laughs> but look, like this, uh, all jokes aside, we're starting to see it right now. And the latest is Brandon Ayuk. And this is the biggest story of the week. 
this is going to be, guys, buckle in. Like, this is going to be an off-season storyline because Brandon Ayuk's going to the last year, his fifth-year option of his rookie deal. Nice little salary, you know, $14 million, $14.1 million, I think it is, for his fifth-year option money, which is a good amount of money. Uh, he would probably like to be paid more than that. And uh, you know his agent's going to be involved, and this is, you know, we already know coming into this, we know the drill. We've seen it with Debo. We've seen it with Bosa. We've seen it with... Fred Warner. We've seen it with George Kittle. Uh, every year, it seems like there's been one guy that the 49ers have to figure out contractually and 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 re up and re negotiate a new deal with. And this year, going into his last year, it's Brandon Ayuk. And you know, the, we already knew that probably no matter how this season ends, whether they've made the playoffs or won the Super Bowl, whatever it was, Brandon Ayuk probably not show up until he's got a new contract. Right? That is going to happen. And so, when that happens, what do you get? You get social media weird stuff. You get requests for trade, and you get all of everything. And then on top of it now, Brandon Ayuk, immediately following the Super Bowl, has got some funny business going on, on 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 social media. You can start to kind of read it what way you want. He hasn't said that he wants out, but um, he's got some close friends and family who are on social media being a little bit louder, kind of saying that maybe they do want out. So what do you guys make of all this? Um, Croc, you sent me one just before we started on Instagram that I hadn't seen yet, which was photos of his jerseys. So break that one down for us. And what do you think he's saying right now? What do you think Brandon Ayuk is telling us right now? So for Brandon Ayuk on Instagram posted two different uh, posts to a story. One was his jersey against the Philadelphia Eagles. It's dirty. It looks like he just must have went to work that day. And then the other post was two jerseys, one from Thanksgiving, one from Super Bowl, Obviously, the 49ers lost both of those games and how clean his jersey was. So he didn't have to say any words, but the post definitely spoke volumes about how he felt about maybe his usage during that time. Now, we talk about the other weird things that's going on. I think it kind of started, and I have to give my girl, uh, Ashley, if, if you're not following her on Twitter, she also has a YouTube channel, at Ashley Ariana. She brought this up January 11th, and everyone told her, Ashley, you're reaching. Ashley, uh, you're just trying to come up with content. You know, and they kind of bashed her and attacked her. Get in the kitchen. You know, all the stuff they tell women, uh, try, you know, in sports. But she watched Brandon and I. You, uh, it must have been like right when the postseason was about to start. And she said, his tone here is a little off. Like the way when they're they're asking him about future plans with Niners the next year. And, and he kind of brushed some things off. And the way he says certain things. And he said something about his agent. And she kind of took a lot from that. She's like, man, I, I hear something. Sounds like a guy that's not really happy. Sounds like he's not happy with whether it's his role or whatever it is. But there's something to it. And everyone dismissed it. And now you can't dismiss it anymore. Because the day after the Super Bowl, his girlfriend comes out. Ah, this might be the last time we're at Levi Stadium. It must have been older, uh, like maybe from a month ago or two months ago. Or um, excuse me, a week ago or so. But she said, this might be the last time my son and I are at Levi Stadium. You know, and obviously her son is Brandon Ayuk's son. Then his brother comes out and he's posting the social media. And I'm not saying take everything that they're saying as Bible with the situation and whatnot. But I do know one thing as someone who you know has been a professional athlete, whether it's arena football league, NFL, whatever, my brother knows what's going on. My brother knows how I feel about things. My girl knows what's going on. You know, if I'm just going about something with locked on for 49, my, my girlfriend, she's going to be the, my wife, excuse me. She's going to be the first one to know. And when his girl and his brother comes out and they say things, I think you got to kind of listen a little bit. And then he posted something. So uh, the 49ers control him. They picked up his fifth year option. They don't have to give into anything or his demands or anything like that. But unlike some of the other contractual situations that the 49ers have gone through, this is the first time that it almost is coming off as someone may be a little disgruntled with whatever his position is with the 49ers. It's a very emotional time right now, right? I mean, he just lost the Super Bowl. That's that's gotta hurt. And then you wanna get paid. You know, you wanna you wanna get yours. You you yeah, you're gonna make 14 million dollars. That's amazing. But he wants 75, you know, he wants 80, he wants 100, he wants a lot of money, and he's going to get it. And then it might not be with the 49ers, unfortunately, and hopefully they can work something out this offseason so there's not a big lengthy contract holdout, and it doesn't get nasty in this day, because I love Brandon Ayuk. I love him as a 49er. And he probably wants to be the number one option, which is why he put out the, the photos of his jersey, right? He's like, look, when I'm the number one, when I'm getting all the, the – 
the targets, we win football games. And he's not wrong. He, he does. He's, he's a fantastic wide receiver. And somebody's probably going to pay him to be that number one wide receiver. The 49ers aren't going to have that kind of money. They're going to need to restructure just to, you know, be able to sign their, their guys that, that they need to sign, including draft picks and things like that. Like some guys are going to need to restructure. Is it going to be Debo? Is it going to be, you know, who knows? Is Fred Warner going to have to do it? Is Eric Armstead going to be one of those guys? Like there's going to be a lot of that going on in the off season too. And then you put this on top of that, like this, this could be a really ugly off season for the 49ers. My, my big brother, you know, we were talking about the game and, you know, obviously we talk about him a lot. Big diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. And he likes to troll. He likes to talk his trash. But he actually kind of felt bad for me. He's like, man, you know, I hate the 49ers, but you're my little brother. And it sucks to see, you know, a team that you root for uh, lose that way. And then he went on to say, and this is without me talking to him about any of this stuff because I don't even think it happened or I was paying attention to it. But he said, you guys don't really value Brandon Ayuk enough. And he's speaking through the eyes of someone who watches Dallas Cowboys and everything that they do with CeeDee Lamb. And how you know productive CD Lamb is, and if they're going to go down, they're going to go down with targeting CD Lamb and making sure that you know he gets his options. Like you know, the way Fortnite utilize, I they don't value him in the offense the same way the Cowboys value CD Lamb. So that was just something interesting to hear, and that's without him even knowing about everything that's going on that we're finding out more of today. Brandon Ayuk, one of the big things the 49ers have to figure out this offseason. More on him, what it would look like if he sticks around, what it kind of might look like if. Maybe they decided, hey, we do need to trade Brandon Ayuk, and he forces his way out, or the 49ers think that that's the way to go. Uh, what else the 49ers have to do in the offseason? Final Super Bowl thoughts coming up on this edition of Locked On 49ers. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's right, $150 extra to play with at FanDuel if your first bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live game, live same game parlays, uh, exclusive props for NBA games, and a ton more. And yeah, I know the NFL season's over. You can bet on the NBA. Still bet on the NFL. You got 2024 season futures you can bet on. You can bet on the 49ers win the Super Bowl next year already. You can bet on draft props, which is one of my favorite ways to play on FanDuel. So get involved and get 150 extra bucks as well if that first bet wins. All you got to do is go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. So when it comes to Brandon Ayuk, a it's it's a it's a it's a raw feeling right now. I don't think we can take anything as gospel that anybody says the day, the second day after losing a Super Bowl. I think that's number one. You got to let people calm down. Go 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 to your best friend, Croc. Go to your brother. Slap him in the face and see what his reaction is right away, and then see what his reaction is two weeks later. You know, so <laughs> that's kind of what I would say about that. It's raw emotions are high and at the same time i can see where brandon Ayuk would say not only in you know one game whether it's christmas whether it's the super bowl whether it's any week him saying ah you know what i wouldn't mind getting 10 12 targets every single game i wouldn't mind being the number one option i wouldn't mind also the money that would come with being the number one option for an NFL football team. So that's just natural, and I could see that being the case, and we've already talked a lot about that, and it wouldn't be shocking if Brandon Ayuk says, you know, I think I would rather play for a worse team, get more targets. That's, you know, that's... Well, he's already tried. He's tried the good the the good teammate thing, right? Like, he's trying yeah. the, the, the good, uh, oh, I'm just going to play within the scheme. Right. And terrific numbers, but then, dang, when it matters most, dang, why are you guys kind of going away from me? And that's the one thing when my brother says, oh, Fortnite's don't value... Ayuk and Lamb the same. It's look at all the different ways the Cowboys utilize Lamb to free him up. And when you watch this game, we talk about Kyle Shanahan and and whatever. I, I I'll never be the one to be critical of the scheme to that standpoint, or that's why Fortnite was lost. But I do notice with the receivers, like what did you do to help them? You know, you you see uh, the Chiefs, they're playing man coverage, sticky man coverage skills. They did a tremendous job, but. Man, how often did he say, all right, Ayuk, we're going to motion you from the left side to the right side to a stack. We're going to release this guy up so it sets a natural pick. You're going to come underneath. You're going to be freed up on the drag route, and we're going to throw the ball to you. Like, How often do you see them say, all right, this is how we're going to do it, as opposed to, well, these are the concepts, and then 
you know, just based off of the concepts where they give you, then we'll execute the play that way. And I think that's what my brother's talking about. And that's probably how Brandon Ayuk feels too. I mean, he's essentially an X. They line, they split him out wide and just like, if, if, if the quarterback's eyes get to you, then yeah, we'll, we'll throw it to you. But mm -hmm. how often is he the first read uh, based on the, the way that the play is designed? And that's probably the thing that could be a little frustrating for him, even to this extent of him last year saying, yeah, I was a thousand yard receiver as the fourth option. People thought like maybe he's like kind of bragging about being a thousand yard receiver. Yeah. I think he's didn't care yeah. to be the fourth option. Right. And it's like, what I did was just the, the little opportunity. So he's frustrated today, right? He had an amazing season. He, his team went to the Super Bowl. He's set to make $14 million next year. How's he going to feel if he goes somewhere else next year, gets a whole bunch more money? Maybe has better numbers, but his team is three and fourteen, and he's sitting at home watching the playoffs. Right? I, yeah. I it's a tough, it's a tough thing to. You know, what's more important in your life? Is it winning and be becoming a champion? That's what he said today, right? What does it mean? Like, what's going to keep you here with the 49ers? And he said, being a champion. Okay, well then, don't go somewhere else where they're going to pay you a whole lot more money because it might be with the Jets. You know, it might be with the Panthers. It might be with the team that's not going to even give you a chance to become a champion. So really, what's more important to you? Being a number one, making more money, and losing football games? Or staying with the 49ers, maybe being that third or fourth option, still making lots of money, but actually having a chance year in and year out to compete for a championship? Right. He's going to bed in late January, maybe even in February for another team. And instead of getting ready for a championship game or a Super Bowl, he's getting great sleep because he's you know, stuffing his pillow full of hundred dollar bills and even getting some nice sleep, you know, which, which one it's do you good. prefer there? And uh, you know, I, I get, you, you can't, I, but with what he's saying and, and sort of the Jersey thing too, is like, I don't think he's saying he wants to play somewhere else and get more targets. Probably part of it. He's saying we lost and you didn't utilize me. Yeah. You know, that's, and I think that's just frustration. Frustrating. If you go to some of the guys that have been called divas or maybe the guys that showed their frustration a little more, that was really all they wanted, right? Yeah. Terrell Owens, you know, who can make a play? I can, yeah. you know, like all of those things. Des Bryant, you see him upset with people on the sideline. Heck, so Travis Kelsey upset yeah. on the sideline. Odell Beckham, he's been wanting to show his frustrations on the sideline. But if you ask them why they're so frustrated, it's because we are losing this game and you're not getting me the ball. Right. I can help us win. And I think that's what he was talking about specifically with that post. I do think his frustrations... And I don't even want to use that frustration overall is probably a strong word, but maybe just aware of the situation and what it potentially could be. But definitely frustrated after this game from the standpoint of uh, why not go to me more? Why not feature me more? I can help us win. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, especially the way the game went, you know, 1919 at the end of regulation, what if you do look to him to design some things up a little bit more? just maybe one more possession of going towards him. Could that have helped the 49ers maybe put up more points in regulation as opposed to just, we're going to rely on the scheme and this is right. exactly what we're going to do instead of believing in, I don't want to say believing in, but instead of saying, man, we really need to feature Brandon Ayuk to help us win this game. It, it's pretty clear that Kyle Shanahan it has, and look for a good reason. There's a lot of good players in the 49ers. He's looking to find ways to get the ball in, McCaffrey, Debo's, uh, even George Kittle's hands, sometimes Kyle Juszczyk's hands, even before he's trying to do something specifically to get, his, get the ball in Brandon Ayuk's hands. Brandon Ayuk's production usually does come through the natural natural progression of a play. And one other thing about the, the jerseys he posted, there is a little bit of chicken or the egg here on that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, the stat about, oh, if we run the ball 30 times, we win. And it's like, well, did you run the ball 30 times because you were ahead? And it's kind of like that with like, okay, yeah, guess what? You win more games when all your players score a lot more touchdowns. So it's like, it's it's both, right? It's like, did they win because he was more utilized or did they win because the the natural progression of the game allowed him to score more and they had more points at the end of the game? So, it, you know, there's there's a lot of ways to look at this thing. And uh, I, I I really just think it's losing a big game. It's, it's what we opened with, with just the, the mentality of, of trying to get back up after going through such a long grind of a season and get yourself mentally prepared to do that again, you got to be frustrated if you're the 49ers after losing that. We talked about the Eagles game and him showing that Jersey, you know, in that same game, Debo Samuel had three touchdowns and a hundred and something yards. So I don't even think it's so much about, uh, Oh, 
you know, give me the ball, we win. Or if somebody else is balling as well, but maybe just giving giving him an opportunity to affect the game more than what he was able to do in the Super Bowl. Yeah, and you know, I didn't. I haven't watched the all twenty twos. You guys maybe have a little bit more knowledge about this sort of thing. Croc, you're you're the DB guy. I mean, did they take him away? Right. I mean, I know Kansas City has two fantastic cornerbacks that maybe he wasn't available. Maybe they didn't have the option to go to him. Maybe he was trying. Maybe Brock was dropping back. I used my first guy. He's not there immediately with what I need. I'm going to check down. I mean, the Niners did it right with their defense. Did we hear Charvarius's ward name called the entire game? Did we hear Diamador Lenore's name called? Like they weren't going after the receivers because there was this opening in the middle with Burks. It was just, it was there. They knew what they needed to, to kind of focus on because that was the weak point in the 49ers defense. Did Kyle see something that he didn't like the matchup with Ayuk and whoever was, was guarding him. And maybe that had something to do with it. I can tell you the Brandon or that uh, Brock Purdy didn't get to read number three very often because they were bringing pressure on him. Like he didn't have a lot of time at all, and there was some pressure breakdowns. And um, but, but Peacock, we yeah. can't use that as a reason to not feature someone, right? I think that Patrick Mahomes, I feel like he gets overlooked in this. He was under duress. He got yeah. sacked multiple multiple times. There was an intentional grounding. He was getting hit in the mouth, and you know. At the end of the day, what they say, all right, 49ers are kind of coming. They're bringing guys. Uh, Chase Young, he's doing terrific. I thought, uh, 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 excuse me, Nick Bosa, he was playing terrific, moving off of his spot. But they said, all right, we're going to move Travis Kelsey. There's no it's, it's no coincidence he had the second half he did. We're moving him all over this formation. We're going to get him in this position. Oh, you're stacked, and that guy's in man versus him. Oh, drag right now. Runs away from Fred Warner. They did everything possible to make sure that they got the ball in the guy in the hands of a guy that's going to affect this game, regardless of the pressure that Mahomes is on under for a majority of the game. Guys, let's also ask the question: Isn't Ayuk the third option? I mean, wouldn't you rather have the ball in Debo's hand, and wouldn't you rather have the ball in Christian McCaffrey's hands than than Ayuk? Like he's great, Ayuk's great, but those other two guys are better, right? I right? think I would. I would disagree. Well, of course he would, but I'm, I'm asking yeah. you guys right now. Yeah, straight up, right? I mean, there there was only the the Chiefs only had two guys that were targeted more than Brandon Ayuk was. Brandon Ayuk had, had six targets. It's a lot in that game. I mean, that's not so. That's not super far off from what his averages are really in in a game. Um, again, I think it's frustration. And look, got to give your got to tip your cap to the Chiefs. They they did a good job covering guys. Uh, some people might say that the wide receivers, the 49 wide receivers were strapped up a little bit. Um, and Steve Spagnuolo did a good job of not giving Brock Purdy a lot of time to sit there and hang out and find Brandon Ayuk a little bit deeper down the field. So th there's a lot going on here as it pertains to just that one game and just what that one game production was. But again, can't fault Brandon Ayuk for thinking, man, what would it be like if I was the number one target somewhere? Sure. And uh, he might get that opportunity. What would that look like? What's the rest on the uh, 2024 offseason to-do list for the 49ers next? This episode of Lockdown 49ers is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy in the NFL is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers to roof racks to exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber not cash. All the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that W. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. So, Brandon Ayuk, that's one of the uh, big items on the to-do list for the 49ers. And here's the thing about the salary cap and bringing him back. Doing a new deal with Brandon Ayuk might actually lower his cap hit from the $14.1 million of his fifth-year option, and it might be the best way for the 49ers to go about things and fit everybody in, and then you worry about what Debo Samuel's future is going to be later. Beyond Brandon Ayuk, guys, uh, what's the... Wink, you watch that football game. What's the number one thing? You see the 49ers, you say, oh, they got to do this next year to get back and get over that hump. 
they, they got to do something on the right side of that line, offensive line. I mean, it was just pressure, pressure, pressure. Uh, it didn't help. You know, Feliciano went down. Like, it, it, it was not fun to watch that over and over, just right side, right side, right side, right side. So, to me, that's kind of the number one thing. Um, I mean, if Dre Greenlaw doesn't doesn't go down, it, it's a different game, right? Maybe you need to invest more in, in a new middle linebacker alongside Fred Warner because Dre Greenlaw is going to miss a lot of time, right? This is a pretty serious injury that he just suffered. It could be up to 12 months. So that's another, like, to me, those are the two biggest areas of concern for the 49ers going into 2024 season is right guard, maybe even right tackle, and middle linebacker. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of Feliciano, did you see the the exchange from Feliciano and Spencer Burford on social media? Man, it's not Brandon. He's not the only one going through no. it right now. I, this one actually, this one really made me laugh. Uh, shout out yeah. to Spencer Burford. He, he cracked me up with his response. So basically, a fan out there was calling out um, Colton McKivitz and uh, um, the the 49ers offensive line. That you know they they missed a couple of protections in that game. That's something the 49ers got to clean up. Letting free runners at your quarterback in some really key situations. And Feliciano's response was, I know you know it all, so you should know that it's not Colton's guy. A quick chop is not needed there if the guy that was supposed to block him blocks him. And Feliciano was hurt in that game, and he's talking about the right guard that came in after him, which is Spencer Burford. Spencer Burford sees that and, <laughs> and responds, sheesh, I open up my app to this. Get well soon, bro. Uh, <laughs> so I just thought that was funny. And, uh, and then Feliciano says, I'm sorry, bro. I woke up hungover. And being a B word, so yeah, um, that was that's what the 49ers are going All through. Been there. So, a lot of frustration going on, and you know whether it's uh, getting the protection straight, whether it's just straight up better players on the right side of the offensive line. I mean, that's pretty clear. That that's one of the things the 49ers got to figure out. Um, Croc, I want to ask you about the free agent list for the 49ers. If there's a name that you see that you think you would want to bring back above all and chase Young's a really interesting name to me because he played his best game in the super bowl and if you got that guy every week he'd be worth paying a lot of money to but i don't need i don't know if you want to spend a long-term money long-term contract on a guy that you're not quite sure if he's going to be up or down and, and what you're going to get week to week from that player so chase young headlines the list of free agents the core players all locked up for the 49ers for the most part but uh, some interesting names on this list, especially on the defensive line. You got Chase Young, you got Randy Gregory. Both were in season trades for the 49ers this year. They'll be free agents. Javon Kinlaw, his fifth year option was not picked up like Ayuk. So he is a free agent this year after his fourth year on his rookie contract. You got Tashawn Gibson, who's been really awesome at free safety for the 49ers. Sam Darnold is a free agent. He was here on just a one year contract. Cleland Farrell also around for a one year contract for the 49ers. John Feliciano. Uh, the free agent guard was on a one-year contract. You got Kevin Givens inside. So clearly the 49ers have to do something on the defensive line just with uh, with depth, and they got to figure out who that fourth starter is going to be as well. Uh, return man Ray-Ray McLeod and uh, linebacker Oren Burks. So a couple special teams guys as well. So, you know, not core players necessarily, but there's some things they have to figure out in free agency, and they're going to have to spend a little bit of money, which they don't have a lot of, but even before they get to the draft. I would probably start with Feliciano there right you know we've talked about some of the struggles of the offensive line and particular the right side and I feel like they're giving Spencer Burford kind of every opportunity to end up being the guy they had him as a, more of a rotation type guard last year with uh Daniel Brunskill which I thought was kind of weird but I think that was their way of saying hey we're going to develop him the, the way that we feel is best for him and kind of bring him along without putting the stress on him to be the guy every single week then this year you felt like he would kind of take that next step but the moment they were able to, they kind of phased them out of there. So I think Feliciano, when if you don't feel like you have that answer without a doubt, he might be a guy that you have to at the very least bring back. So there's some kind of depth there on the right side of that line. And then obviously try to figure out what to do at the right tackle spot. But I do think it, with everything that you named, it kind of starts at the right guard spot. And do you think that uh, Brock was under any more or less pressure once Feliciano left the game? Seemed like more. Um. I I I think the Chiefs did something at halftime and made some adjustments, which was a big part of it as well. And it wasn't like offensive linemen were necessarily missing a ton of one-on-one -on -one blocks. It happened a little bit, but it was scheme stuff. It was like, you know, a corner blitzing off the edge. I mean, they're showing a lot of looks here. And it's like, okay, well, who do you block? And you end up missing someone completely right up the middle uh, in some cases. So um, I think it's a little bit of everything there. And the better you are, 
the less help you have to bring as far as you know running backs and chipping and those kind of things and Trent Williams isn't young either so that's why offensive tackle is so big to me because uh it makes you better on one side and you're gonna have to replace the other guy at some point as well and so you know can you do a two for one in the first round potentially get a guy who ends up starting at the right tackle spot early goes to the left tackle maybe I don't know um and maybe just worry about Trent Williams when that time comes and he decides to retire uh, but yeah, uh, you don't have a lot of money in free agency to do those, those types of things either, which makes it a little bit more difficult. And the 49ers have done a pretty good job of, of finding stop gap guys like Feliciano on one year deals, like, uh, Jake Brendel, you know, so he was a street free agent. Nobody thought anything of it. And all of a sudden he's got a, a long-term deal and he's a starting center for the 49ers. So, uh, I think you can patchwork some things a little bit more difficult at offensive tackle than the interior guys. Brandon Ayuk here, real quick here, and, and let's just let's just let's just come all the way full circle. By the way, of those free agents, I think Randy Gregory is the one as far as what he would get. Even though maybe he's a rotational guy, he was a pretty good player for the 49ers. and I think what it costs to bring him back, I think he might be more likely than someone like uh, than Chase Young to bring back. Do they just keep giving guys one year deal though? Opposite in Bosa, it's, like it's been working out, right? It's working. Find the the guy that comes to the right. Yeah, it's like if they want too much, okay, we're we're gonna find a different guy and, and bring him in. And Farrell was a nice, you know, rotational guy. If you if you said, hey, early downs, run downs, we're going Farrell. Passing downs, we'll go Randy Gregory. Yeah, I think it's all right. That's that's solid. And I think they could add some players in the draft. You should never be shocked if they had a um, if they drafted a a defensive end in the first round to pick number thirty one, right? On the on the IU subject, so. I mentioned about how if they re-signed him, they could even bring his cap number down in 2024, and then you have to figure out what you're going to do with Debo, and, and clearly it would be long-term Debo and Ayuk wouldn't be making big dollars at the same time. So that would mean like after 2024, 2025 offseason, you have to start thinking about Debo maybe moving on from that contract at the end. And you know, there's a lot of ways they can do a lot of restructures and try to work things out in the short term and try to bring everybody along and keep everybody. I think that's probably what the 49ers' plan is. Because eventually I think they need to have a better standard drop back passing game. And that's probably more IU with Purdy as things go along, especially if you're going to pay uh, Purdy a whole bunch of money. But what would it look like? Teams come calling. Wink. What's the pick? What is there? A, is there a, a number in the first round where you say, okay, it's got to be a top 15 pick. And I'll start thinking about maybe trading brain and IU. And then maybe if that top 15 pick gets a lot easier to find someone who's a difference making edge rusher, a difference making, uh, offensive tackle that's a true stud day one starting offensive tackle that might be hard to find say a pick 31 what does that even look like what's the thing that says okay this is more valuable than our third fourth off receiving option as good as brandon Ayuk is or is it more along the lines of people calling saying hey is Debo available? Do the 49ers field those calls? Do they say, okay, this is a guy who has durability issues, who's getting older, who is making a lot of money. And like you said, there comes a point where you have to kind of get away from that scheme and go more to just the drop back with this Ayuk. So maybe Ayuk's more the future and people are calling, trying to get Debo from the 49ers, in which case, mm. what kind of draft pick you get for that? And everybody, every like, wait, you, you guys will see it. It happens all the time. And they need to stop doing it because Debo Samuel is a, a unique player. Uh, the next Debo, there's going to be three or four next Debos yeah. in this draft class. It's like you're right. At some point, teams are going to stop trying to find the next Debo and just call the 49ers about Debo. And wonder, you say that's a real thing too. Like teams are looking for it, and it's like there's nobody like him. Yeah, right. he's he's different. Or excuse me, there are people like him, but they're not him. And I think there's there's very little wiggle room. And I think we saw part of that right in the in the Super Bowl where it's like, hey. Can't really get open. That, that's part of the package with him, like against man coverage. But when he gets the ball, how special he is. You know, Peacock, you had talked a, a little bit before about quarterbacks. And if there's, you know, something, if you're kind of towing that line of physical ability and then something kind of throws that off and you kind of dip below it, I think that's what we saw with Debo. And I think a lot of guys coming into the league, you know, if they're kind of towing that line of being a unique player like Debo, but they're not quite Debo, you can kind of dip below what you need to be to be a consistent receiver in the league. And uh, I think that's why teams are going to struggle to find someone that could replicate the production he's given the 49ers. Right. Cause if you have Debo Samuel, but you're not quite explosive enough and you're not quite uh, mentally the type of guy who's going to you know, run through people, then you become LaVisca Chenault pretty quick. Yeah. Is what you're saying. Yeah. Um, all right. 
And hey, before free agency hits, the 49ers might have to figure something out with their coaching staff. Yeah. Steve Wilkes getting a lot of heat out there tomorrow, Croc. That's a topic of conversation. Might the 49ers make a change? Kyle Shanahan looked extremely frustrated at one point in uh, in the Super Bowl. Might the 49ers make a change at defensive coordinator? We'll get into all of that. Wink, appreciate you joining the show as you do every Wednesday. Always a lot of fun. Thanks to all the everydayers out there for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. Croc and I back tomorrow right here, Locked on 49ers. See you. Can't believe it.